Hi to everyone, Nitesh this side. I hope you all are doing really well. Um, in this video, we're going to take a look at how can you instrument your Flask application with the help of Signals. All right. Um, before we move further, we're going to take a look at uh, what are the prerequisites for um, instrumenting your Flask application and have those logs metrics and traces get visible at the signals so we have a specific documentation already meant for you and we'll be following this documentation so if you want to specifically know how can you do that so make sure you watch the video till the very end and without any further delay let's get started so just a little bit overview of what exactly signals is so signals is an open source observability platform and uh, it's entirely open source so you can eventually get your metrics logs traces in a, a way better fashion as compared to the other tools uh, example format. So uh, since we're going to take a look at how can you instrument your Flask application, I would highly recommend that you first of all go to the signals.io slash talk slash instrumentation and slash Flask. As you can see that if you are having another sort of uh, options that you would like to configure. For example, we have Django, we also have Fast API, we also have Hypercon. So if your application makes use of these libraries, then we have specific document already maintained. But since for this, app, uh, for this video, we're going to talk about how can you instrument using the Flask. So let's get started and take a look at that. Uh, the only requirement is that you need to have Python obviously installed. Uh, another th thing that I want to mention is that if you go through here, you can see that from VMs, there are two ways to send data to Signos Cloud. So we are eventually going to move forward with the recommended way, which is send traces via Otal Collector binary. So if I click here, as you can see, I, I land over to here. Now, uh, if you entirely read this documentation, you eventually need to perform some steps for your application, right? So I'm going to play with the sample Flask application, uh, which has already been under Signos slash sample Flask app. Um, so if you don't know, if you do not have the link for it, do not worry about that. All the links will be mentioned in the description. So you can take a look at that as well. Um, all right, let's get started. So the first thing is that we're going to clone this. And as you can see, I have already cloned this application. So you can see that this is the app.py uh, and we have other sort of files as well. All right, what's the next step? Let's take a look. So the first step is basically to create the virtual environment. Uh, if you go to the Flask application, we also have a readme maintained here. But uh, since I'm going to specifically move forward with, you know, your Otel collector binary instruction that has been mentioned at docs, I'm going to use these specific docs. All right. Uh, if you if you take a look at this, um, we eventually need certain information for this sample flask application to run. For example, uh, since this sample flask application makes use of the MongoDB, so we eventually need to run that MongoDB instance as well for this application to store our data. All right. So we also need to run the MongoDB so that our application can interact with it. I can basically run it with the help of Docker container. Uh, sorry, I can help it uh, by running inside a Docker container. Let's start with creating the virtual environment. So I'm just going to copy paste this command. As you can see, I'm inside my sample flask app. I'm going to just copy it and it has set up the environment already for me. All right. And now the next, uh, basically your next task is to install all the open telemetry dependencies so your application can send that telemetry, telemetry data or the instrumentation data. So as you can see, this has been getting configured. Um, as you already have, we have already provided information about what open telemetry distro does, what this open telemetry exporter OTLP um, package. So you can take a look at that as well. All right, then we're going to add the automatic instrumentation. Uh, let's do that as well for this application. All right, it, it generally says that requirement already satisfied because we have already configured it for your application. And now the main thing also comes is, uh, so if you have the, you know, if you have, as you can see, we have a requirements.txt file already here that eventually tells about what are the packages we need to install. So if I go through my requirements.txt, you can see that these are just certain packages that I need to install. So I can also go through the readme and, and specify this thing in, in order to install the dependencies by requirements.txt file. So I can just paste it and you can see that all these does the exact same thing as your uh, sample flask. Oh, sorry for that. Yeah, all your, it, it does the exact same thing as has been it has been mentioned here. Now, uh, since we're going to use the Otel collector binary, uh, 
it is highly recommended that you eventually first of all have the config file uh, otl collector config file already present on your local machine so um, if i go through again here you can see that we have mentioned that you can find instruction to install the otl collector binary here so if i go here it, all the information has already been present here so eventually we would recommend that you eventually start with so this is the basically the otl collector config file that is eventually we're going to use all right with with some minimum pair changes that we're going to make but uh, so as i mentioned that this application needs to interact with our uh, mongodb we're also going to run a mongo container as well so yeah i can i can eventually run the docker container and just wait for the docker container to eventually all right and now i'm going to i'm going to just wait for the docker container to eventually run all right as you can see docker container uh, so the mongo container is actually running now now in, i am now basically i need to start this application and in order to start this application i basically need to set these uh, so it, it generally says that you in order to run your application and send data to the collector you need to uh, configure some environment variable and then start running your application so um i'm going to just copy this command i'm going to paste it now i need to make some changes here so what is the command that i need to run it will be python3 app.py because i want to run my main application again the uh, otl pick protocol will be grpc uh, it will be 4317 the exported endpoint will be 4317 since uh, that's where since that's the port through which my otl collector is actually looking for the data and i want to give a name something like sample flask application all right yeah i think this is done and if i run it you can see that my application has started running if i go to the local host 5002 all right as you can see this application is running well if i refresh it it's running well um if i go to the signos cloud if i refresh it you can see that uh this the service is not present my sample application is not present why because you eventually need certain things if for this application to be configured you eventually need to provide the ingestion key you also need to provide the region in which your signos cloud is actually running all right but um so that can be done as well for example you can see if i make some if i just refresh it if i just try to hit multiple requests these are these are getting st stored here all right now is the important part which is around how can you write your otl collector configuration file so i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to just paste it here which i have already done it here so as you can see this is my entire otl collector uh, configuration file all right uh, if you go to the below fields you need to make some changes to your field the first thing is if you see that endpoint you need to specify in which endpoint your signos cloud is running and you also need to provide your signos access token all right so if you if i go to the signos cloud and i go to the settings then you can see you have an ingestion settings if you click here ingestion settings you're going to see your region for we for me it's in and and you are also going to see your signos ingestion key so just make sure that you copy paste this entire thing and you paste the correct credentials here all right once that is done uh, the one small thing that we're going to do uh, is eventually since our application is running uh, since our application is basically running on the port 5002 so what are we going to do is we are also going to add cores because we eventually want this application to send instrumentation instrumentation data to the signos so eventually are going to add some cores that is specifying the port on which this application is running on so my application as you can see this application is running on local host 5002 so i have just added simple details telling the open telemetry collector that uh, this is basically the http cores that you need to monitor all right or or basically this is a th uh, this is the application uh, which is running on port 5002 local host all right uh, once specified this thing we are good to go now the only thing that i need to do is basically start my uh, otl collector as well all right so if i go here as you can see this is my configuration file i have otl contrib already i'm going to do nothing i'm just going to copy paste all the commands i have mentioned here so i can simply follow this and i can say dot slash otl contrib and this is it enter 
Um, all right, as you can see, it has been um, the port has been already occupied. No worries about that. You can just uh, delete the port. And if I now run it, uh, all right, that's working well now. You, as you can see, it has a, it has stated that starting scrap manager, and it has already running and processing data. So now your application will be eventually present here. So if I go to services, it is not present right now. If I just refresh it, let's try to interact with that application, maybe try to add some task. I'm going to say the task is task 01, description is this is the description, um, the timing is 30, date is okay. 4, priority is it's a very high priority, I'm going to create this task. I'm going to create some more task, task 02, uh, this is the random description, date is 12032024 and priority is low. I'm going to create this and I'm going to create one more task. Task 03. This is the random description and the date is 12052023. Priority is very low. And we have created these three tasks. If I go to my application, as you can see, these tasks have been created. All right. Now I will just do some addition things. As you can see, if I go to all, this task I have completed, I'm going to set its status to tick. So all these have been created so far. Now, if I go to my Signos cloud, let me try to refresh and you can see that my sample flask application has is present. So if I click to the sample flask application, uh, you can see that this data is going to get restored. As you can see, I have set the timer as last 30 minutes. If I just refresh it to say it like last five minutes, uh, then the data will be more present. But um, let me just try to interact with my application more. So if I try to interact with my application more and more and just uh, refresh it, you will automatically see the graphs getting appeared here. So if I try to, for example, if I try to generate an error, let's say, and now if I try to hit the refresh, let's see, as you can see, this, this data is getting generated, all the graphs are getting generated here. All right. Uh, so sometimes it happens that most of the times users come up with the queries that they're not able to see the data or they're not able to see the metrics being plotted. Uh, so it, it becomes very important that you eventually see why you're not able to see those metrics, it depends upon the period of time you're trying to view at. All right. For example, in, in last 30 minutes, I was not being shown anything. But if I change the timing to last five minutes, it eventually showed me some data. All right. If I refresh it again, as you can see, this is eventually getting here. And I can just uh, okay, so if I want to take a look at specific operation, for example, get operation, I can just click here, it will make me move to the traces tab. If I want to look at a specific traces, I can just go to the traces tab here, I can then go to the trace ID, for example, I'm interested in this trace ID that has a root duration of 697 milliseconds, I'll just click here, and I'll just go to the specific trace details. And you can see all these details have been mentioned. The event detail, there is no event detail for this, but you can see that the service name is this, this one is the URL, the status code is 404, you know, uh, this one is a Signos collector ID. So uh, depending on how your application is configured, you can you can obviously get this, um, you can obviously plot this type of dashboard. So as you would have noticed, I have, have uh, clicked on generate error, which eventually generated me the error, and it has eventually shown me the uh, error percentage graph as well. If I want to plot my own dashboard, I can just simply click here. I can click create a new dashboard. Uh, let's click here uh, and then I can click here a new panel. I'm going to select the panel as time series and I'm going to plot a matrix. So I'm going to matrix is going to come from say like something like um, CPU process time. And this is going to be the rate. The operator is going to be the rate. And I'm going to check uh, where my operating system type, since I'm on Linux, is equal to Linux. And I'm going to, yeah, that's the query. 
if I run this query, as you can see, I have generated a simple metric for that. This is last five minutes. I can set it to last five minutes. So last 30 minutes. Now I can set it to five minutes and I want to specific. I can specifically see where it's getting the, you know, the highest peak time. All right. And then I can save these changes. If I click OK, this has been saved and this has been plotted here. I can obviously change change its title as well, depending upon uh, my application use case. So so this was a basically the demo around how can you uh, eventually instrument your Flask application. We did the very simple steps. We just followed what was in the documentation. And based on that, we eventually were able to uh, instrument our application and see this data available on the Signos cloud. As you can see, if I go to the services tab, if I go to the sample Flask application, I changed my duration of time last five minutes and you can see that data is getting generated or the metrics are getting generated here. External metrics also, you can see the data is there. All right. So I hope you have liked this video. If you have, uh, then make sure that you go through the other videos as well if you have specific doubts. And uh, also join our Signals community Slack channel. And if you have any doubts, let us know in the Slack community and we'll be happy to answer your queries around that. Thank you and have a good day.